sellout crowd at Sydney Cricket Ground for the 1966 Rugby League Grand Final between ten times successive premiers St George and Balmain. A try scorer in each of his six Grand Final appearances, winger Johnny King arrives with retired captain coach Norm Proven. Halfback Billy Smith, fullback Graham Langlands recovered from a groin injury. Irish front rower Robin Gurley and his wife. By eight, Brian Pop Clay with daughters Karen and Sandra. Reg Gasnier, sidelined with a knee injury from midway through the season, has a sympathetic glance for Balmain's George Piper, who's also out with a troublesome knee. There's no age limit for the Tigers' supporters, and they're confident of their men. In the dressing room, second rower Dennis Tutty has a leg massage to loosen muscles. So too Arthur Beetson, at 15 stone nine, Balmain's heaviest player. Outside centre, former Queenslander Kevin Yao Yi. Adjustments are made to gear before teams are summoned to the arena. St George are first out, led by Ian Walsh, playing his fourth grand final for the Dragons, who have ten of the last year's combination in their lineup. There's no survivors from the 56 team, the year in which St George began their unparalleled run of success. Their longest serving members being Lumsden and Clay, products of the 57 season. And here comes Balmain, captained by Keith Barnes, who kicked three goals for the Tigers in each of his two previous grand final clashes against St. George in 56 and 64. Injury has forced Balmain to make last-minute selections both back and forward, and they'll be hard-pressed to hold their redoubtable opponents. Winning the toss for St. George, Walsh elects to defend the Paddington end of the ground. St. George are heavily favoured to win the battle for the J.J. Gilton and Shield, named after a founder of the Code and manager of the first Australian team to tour England. <whistles> Former Great Britain international David Bolton, Balmain's half-back, kicks off driving the ball deep into Dragon territory. Raper makes beyond the 25 before being forcefully taken by Boland and Proven. The great rough combination of dummy half Walsh and pivot man Smith whipped the ball out smartly, but Rasmussen loses possession in Proven's jolting tackle, knocking on, endeavouring to recover. With their far greater experience, St George appear likely to dominate the scrums, but they're penalised for incorrect formation. A big chance for Golden Boots' Keith Barnes. A Tiger supporter offers advice as Barnes prepares to kick for goal from about 37 yards out. He's kicked 65 during the season, and this one makes it 66. And a boy, Balmain lead 2-0. Endeavouring to counter the Dragons' scrummaging power, Balmain concede penalties, giving St George a chance to quickly equalise scores. Wearing a new pair of boots, Langlands has an opportunity of proving their worth. From an acute angle right on the 25-yard line, he makes no mistake. It's two all after just on eight minutes. Raper spearheads an attack, but the rugged Tutty and Beetson bring him to a halt. In typical fashion, St George used their big men to soften up the opposition in the early stages, with Huddard playing a leading role. Mutton combines with Smith to outpace the front-line defence, but Balmain's backs cover efficiently. Constantly moving the ball amongst the forwards, St George hold the initiative to gain entry into Balmain's stronghold, and they're poised for an all-out attack. Walsh sends to Smith, on to Clay, who reverse passes. Ducking under Beetson's tackle, Smith sends Paul out away on the burst, and he crosses for a spectacular try. are on the march as Langlands converts. The try in slow motion. Handling twice in the movement, Smith's precision pass to Pollard splits the defence as St George gained control of the game in the first quarter of an hour. The lead 7-2. Balmain's attempt to launch counter thrusts are vividly portrayed in slow motion, but Clay and Smith's tackle of Marashi illustrates the bruising force of the Premier's defence. A 
exerting heavy pressures, and George aimed to bustle their rivals, who find it difficult to escape the close marking tactics. With no room in which to move, they vainly probe for openings and become unsettled, making fundamental mistakes which the ever-ready dragon opportunists quickly grasp. I beg your pardon, madam. Crashing down the centre, Ryan creates havoc in the rucks. With quick play of the ball, St. George seek to catch the rival forwards out of position, but the alert proven saves many dangerous situations. Close to the 25, Rasmussen fires a pass to Smith to enable the backs to continue the attack. From the dummy half position, Walsh sends Huddard through a gap, and the former Great Britain forward goes in for the Dragons' second try. A comfortable conversion by Langlands gives the Saints a handy 12-2 lead. Balmain are well served by Tutty's defence. St. George use their inside backs effectively with Clay in the vanguard. Maintaining a fast tempo, the Premiers vary their pattern with the forwards charging through the rucks, often taking two or more tacklers with them. Raper, Smith and Clay open up play as Pollard flashes onto well-directed passes, but he receives rugged treatment, especially at the hands of Ya Yi, who is called out for a warning by referee Carl Pierce. Melbourne television personality Graham Kennedy appears a trifle shocked, but Sydney's Don Lane accepts it as part of the game. With Balmain standing up close, Smith kicks over their heads. Clay follows through as Barnes fields the ball safely, but he's heavily grounded on the 25. Under heavy fire in possession, the Tigers could pay dearly for handling or passing errors. The forwards attempt to ruck the ball out, but lose it in the jarring tackles of their rivals. Snapping up the advantage, St. George press goalwards. Smith uses Ryan as a decoy to dispatch a delayed pass to Lumsden, but Mara has his man covered. Enjoying a huge territorial advantage, St. George hold the ball for long periods, but Balmain are untiring in their efforts to keep them at bay. St. George are doing their utmost to undermine the confidence of Balmain's completely new front row combination, and Bolton is penalised for not putting the ball in straight. The Tigers have plenty of problems as their opponents receive good goal-kicking opportunities. Langlands lands his fourth goal, and Balmain's hopes are indeed slim as St. George take a 12-point lead. Ryan is on the receiving end of Tutty and Jones' attempt to shake the ball free, and assisted by Beetson, they pile-drive the 15-stoner into the turf. Tigers' three surviving forwards from the 64 grand final. Bolan, Tutty and Croven use their guile to tighten their scrums. St. George are penalised in their own half, and Bath's boys, through the magical boot of Barnes, have a chance to make up a little of the leeway. The kick is being taken about 50 yards out and 10 yards in from touch. And it's there all the way, but Balmain still trail by 10 points. Trying to find a defensive loophole, Balmain throw the ball about, but Pollard intercepts as a half-time hooter sounds. Beaten by six points in 56 and by five two years ago, Balmain will need to improve sharply to get back into today's match. Premier Askin, MLA's Morton and Hills discuss their prospects, as does recently elected SCG trustee Arthur Morris and another cricket great, Stan McCabe. Bill Young, Commonwealth Games team manager, Dave Brown, former Australian rugby league captain, and record-breaking halfback Keith Holman. In the second half, St. George run with the wind. Langlands follows his grubber kick through to take Tutty down heavily. Balmain strike back through Proben's penetrating bursts. They're endeavouring to draw in the defence before sweeping the ball wide. Replacing Brian Sullivan, Dave Cooper sends to Boland, who switches the point of attack. But Beetson is firmly held by Gooley's replacement, Trevor Levin. Pacey Sid Williams, substituting for Bolton, is elusive, but Clay's rock-like defence holds fast. A 
accelerating, Tutty spears up the centre, but there's not the slightest sign of any slackening in the famous St George defensive screen as they drive the ball back into the ruck where they assert full control. Unable to make headway, Balmain take calculated risks. Barnes is up in the front line, but 5'8's Jones kick flies off the side of his boot, striking Raper before Clay regains possession for St George. The Dragons meet eager defence, but keep the ball in play as they're prepared to wait for openings. Clay to Huddett, who knocks on. Beatson gathers the loose ball, giving the Tigers a chance to turn defence into attack. Coming up into the back line, hoping to create an overlap, Barnes sends to Jones, but he's well marked by his opposite number, Clay. The Belrain skipper tries to get his team moving smoothly, and Proven makes ground, but lack of support causes the movement to break down. Harassed and hemmed in by their rivals, the Tigers are frustrated in their efforts to find a gap. They persevere, but are showing the effects of the torrid battle as loose passing results in loss of possession. And there's always a dragon on the spot to claim the ball. Tending to lose restraint in tackles, Boland is called out to receive a severe warning. The leader of the forwards, he's played over a hundred games for the Tigers. As Balmain tires, Clay's constructive play is a constant threat. Langlands is chiming in, but Yao Yi has Pollard marked. Beatson lashes out, making contact with Pollard's ankle before the ball touches the ground, and he's warned for deliberately conceding penalties. It's within range, and Langlands is on target for St George to take a 16-4 lead. Skirting the ruck, Smith penetrates on numerous occasions, Balmain having to use desperate measures to contain him. The Dragons steam through as Raper sends to Ryan, and the law student dashes away to score close to the posts. His first try in seven grand finals for the Saints. A simple conversion for Langlands, and the Premiers gain a commanding lead of 21 to 4. St George move forward again, and they're on the way to their biggest winning margin since defeating West's 22-0 in 1961. Belmain struggle to hold them, but they're weary. Since beginning their unbeaten streak a decade ago, St George have scored 36 grand final tries to five, and they're considerably adding to that record today. Four times they've beaten Wests, Manly twice, Easts and Souths once, and seem certain to complete a trio of defeats on Belmain. Slow motion affords a close study of their flawless teamwork, handling, quick thinking and backing up. First entering the grade competition in 1921, St George were four times runners-up before winning their initial premiership 20 years later. Over anxious in their bid for possession, Balmain surrender penalties in the play the ball. Through Langland's missed goal, they gain a reprieve, with Barnes running the ball out. State rowing representative Tutty takes over. Using his strength, Beatson makes ground, and Levin painfully discovers he's got a pretty hard skull. Clearing their 25, Balmain spread the ball. Proven shooting up the middle until halted by Levin. Urged on by Barnes, the Tigers in a determined rally gradually make ground. Throwing the ball about, they continue the attack and with the defense on the wrong foot, Mara, a member of the 64 side, beats tacklers as he cuts in field. Pollard stops him, but the boys from Balmain are away again. Leo's crashing run has the St. George defenders groping until he too is taken by Pollard. Balmain defeated St. George in the first and second rounds of the competition, but a repeat performance in the grand final seems virtually impossible.
on the blind side. Barnes weaves into the clear, and Leo is in support. The front row is taken by King and loses the ball, which is gathered by Langley. possession the Tigers have an opportunity to mount another attack but they're slow to move on to the pass as St George choke off the play Tutty spearheads a raid Jones beats Clay and kicks for winger Cross who has an exciting race for the ball with Langland gathers just in time, but Balmain has the pin their own 25. Balmain receive a scrum penalty. Their supporters, perched on precarious foundations, shout encouragement as the Tigers follow Barnes up and under. Langlands takes the ball just short of the line, and St. George forwards line up to ruck it out. Re-entering Tiger territory, St. George shatter the defence as Raper speeds towards the line, but he's taken by Williams and Yao Yi, falling face first onto Yao Yi's knee. On the play of the ball, Balmain are penalised right in front. An easy one for Langlands, who lands his seventh goal, giving St. George a 19 points advantage. Rasmussen's pass is deflected off Ryan's chest. Tutty grasping possession, but St. George win 23-4, taking their 11th successive premiership, a world record in any code of football.